All right, let us bring out our second company. That company is Inside DNA. Presenting for Inside DNA, our CEO, Andre Kamilevsky, and Chief, Stra Chief Science Officer, Anna Kostikova. Hi, guys. I'm Anna, Chief Science Officer of Inside DNA. And in Inside DNA, we make drug discovery faster and cheaper with the help of genomic and artificial intelligence. We all take drugs to cure diseases, but some drugs are more efficient than others. And what makes drugs successful is its ability to interact with our body. And the element responsible for this interaction is called drug target, and it's typically a protein. So identification of the best drug targets and compounds is the first and the most important stage at any drug discovery process. But today, $1 billion per drug is lost due to inefficient and suboptimal choice of those drug targets. But why exactly choosing the right drug target and compound is so difficult and expensive? Well, let's take just one single protein and try to evaluate it. First, we need to identify which genes in our genome are responsible for the production of the protein. Then we need to assess all the chemical, biological, and structural and functional features of the protein. Then we also need to assess whether any other compound or known drug will be able to react with this protein. And this, of course, takes a team of scientists, a lot of know-how, and comprehensive analysis of large and very often very scattered data. So in other words, the process is lengthy and expensive. And this is just one single protein. An average biotech company needs to evaluate 25,000 of those. While companies go differently about that, the process is very often subjective and manual. So the companies end up filtering out most of the proteins based on some prior assumptions, and then they just leave out of the, outside of their target research the ones that are best drug targets. So to make the process of the drug target discovery fast, automated, objective, and comprehensive, we developed inside DNA discovery. And with the inside DNA discovery, we use using genomics, artificial intelligence, and text mining to identify new drug targets or to retarget existing compounds for the novel therapeutic usage. And with this approach, we are able to comprehensively analyze all the proteins and find the best and less risky choice for the biotech companies. But now let's see how it works. Let's say I'm a researcher at a biotechnology company and I'm working on the cure for the prostate cancer. At the Inside DNA platform, I can do two things. If I already have the list of advanced compounds, I can give them this to our platform and try to find a new therapeutic usage, but that's not the case for this particular study. I want to find the new drug targets. Next, I need to specify the disease. Here I'm going to type prostate cancer, but importantly, any other disease with the strong genetic component can be analyzed on the platform. Next, I need to specify the weightings of different data sources that will be used in our ma ma machine learning and artificial intelligence algorithm. And we basically support two ty types of data. The primary data sets are the genomic data that we obtain from the healthy and ill patients. And the secondary data are all sorts of databases, literature, patents, and medical records from which we mine the support for the hypothesis that we're testing about the prostate cancer. Next, of course, I need to upload the data, and we support various types of ge primary genomic data, from the whole exome sequencing, genome sequencing, to the genotyping array, and even metabolomic data. And finally, I'm just visually verifying the settings. Of course, the processing of such amount of data takes time, and usually it's between several days to a couple of weeks of processing, on, even in the cloud, that's what we use on the background. But now let's see the result. So my expectation is that from the all the spectrum of the potential drug targets, I have just a short list. And here what it comes out. And the proteins here are sorted according to two scores. The first score is a confidence score. And this is the confidence score based on the primary genomic data. The second score is the dragability score. And this is what we mined from the sec uh, secondary data sources. Of course, I would like to look into more details at every single protein and see what are particular clinical features, structural, biological, and functional features of that protein, and even to look at the 3D structure to go into the further pipeline. Go to demo. We are a B2B company with 32 billion target market, and our pricing depends on the amount of compounds or targets to be analyzed. 
We are not new in life science. Three years ago, we started by building cloud-based platform for genomic analysis, which brought optimized storage, computing, and reproducible research to scientists. It has been used by more than 1,500 research labs worldwide, and that experience, which helped us understand broader problem industry uh, and create our discovery platform to show you today. Even before the official launch of our solution, uh, it's generated quite some interest in the field. And we are very excited to announce our collaboration with Illumina, who is a key player in genomic industry. We are also in the process of negotiation with the two biotech companies to set uh, uh, pilots. In Inside DNA, we believe that the new era of drug development is uh, entirely in automation and artificial intelligence. And if you want to increase speed or accuracy of your R&D processes, please check out the website or see us in Expo today. Thank you very much. All right, who wants to take the first DNA question? I'll, uh, I'll take a stab at this. So, so your, your goal is to help drug uh, companies uh, deliver new molecules, which will then treat the, you know, the particular type of cancer. Uh, is Not the cancer, or, yeah, or any yeah. Uh, other uh, effect. But uh, so, the, how how are you helping the molecule development uh, in by, by doing this? I mean, the molecules and how they interact with the pro proteins is an unknown in the first place, right? So, uh, how are you helping them coming up with new molecules to target these proteins? So we, uh, it's not the uh, coming up with the new molecular structures, let's say, but rather the identification of the proteins that are triggering disease. So that's one thing. And the second part is if they already have advanced compounds in which they already invested quite some money, and for example, they don't know which therapeutic usage can be applied to them. That's where we can help and really uh, help to monetize on that, right? Okay, so for example, if, if it's already been an approved drug, but they, and it targets a particular protein, and that protein has an effect on prostate cancer, then they should do some trials with that, yeah. and toxicology tests or whatever. Exactly. And then hopefully that, that'll uh, yeah. Go to the next yeah, produce results for them. Mm -hmm. Okay, Francesca. Presumably the companies you go and talk to, the drug companies, they have a solution to some extent which does some of this already. Mm -hmm. How is your solution better than that existing solution, and how do you sell it to them? Yeah, I think the, the main goal of our tool is prioritization, because it's where the most of the resources are going to. So the more evidence you have to support a specific statement that you're making in the company, should I go forward into like expensive lab or clinical trials, yeah. the more confidence you have and less risk. So I think that inside DNA is a perfect complementary solution to whatever is done in the lab or ha a biotech company already has. Or if they want to diversify their, let's say, drug programs, then this is another option because usually uh, you need to start somewhere, and this is an excellent tool to, 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 to do the first steps. Especially for the companies who are in early stage and don't, don't have uh, big funds and the technology behind. Are you pricing it accordingly? depending on early stage. On the stage, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so essentially the pricing is two-sided. So first it's on volume-based, and second one is milestone-based. So depending on how far the, what we suggested on the platform, either a drug target or a compound is reached, let's say it reached only animal or cell models, then we take some amount of money from the company. The price. The price. Different. Then let's say X amount out of those that we've proposed mm -hmm. already reaching the clinical or clinical trials, mm. then we charge a Go little up, bit more, right. and so on. So okay. it's very fair in terms of, you know, success rate. So if yeah. we indeed helping them to reach their milestones, then we're charging for the successful compounds or successful drug targets. On average, how much do you expect to make per customer per year? Let's get ballpark. So, I mean, yeah. right now we're in the pilot. Uh, so we believe 100, so it's 150K per company at the moment, but it's early, early, it's in defecation stage, yeah. Later on, it goes like in two, in two years, in the next stage, so it's cost per one single target, which go through is 20K, so it's go much higher. But at the moment, 150K per 100 uh, target, which we suggest. And as a follow-up question, in terms of market size, when you said 32 billion, I'm assuming that's 
top down. Mm -hmm. If you look bottom up, mm -hmm. the exact number of customers you yeah. have in your addressable yeah. markets, whether yeah. it's US, Western Europe, yeah. and times the pricing that you expect mm -hmm. to charge, what do you get to roughly? So uh, we have 1,000 companies on early stage out of 3,000, which is 32 billion. So it's around 10 billion, mm -hmm. uh, right? And, uh, and then they, they spend 10 million per year per, per, per drug, yeah. So, and then we hoping to get 5% of them, so it's a 50 companies. So it was half a billion. Yeah, our like, our Five real target. Yes, 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 okay. yes. Okay. Yes. In the US and Western Europe? Or it's US one. US, US only yeah, US yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Got it. And we actually start kind of approaching them. Like in the exactly, US. our yeah. two pilots are yeah. silicon based ones. So what's your traction so far? Yeah, so the, like because we're just releasing the platform, for us the most important was to develop this platform with the close niggas, like speaking to the potential customers. And this is, we like it to have this, like our inside DNA research, which allows us to do this kind of uh, negotiation. So, so far we've been able to get the two uh, companies on board, mm -hmm. but we hope that once we get through the, their first opinion approval and beta mm -hmm. testing, then we can go more and to verify that everything is yeah, because our, I mean, we're quite new in the industry anyway, so uh, the best way is to approach well network uh, advisors and mentors, that's what we're doing, it's the best way for us, at least it works, uh, and then they link us to the companies and early, early, early stage, not pharma yet, so. Uh, so I have a, um, a question regarding the integration of your platform with their existing platform. Mm -hmm. It seems to be that there is a lot of data that the user has to put himself, uh, which is, you know, leave some space for human error. Mm -hmm. um, so what are your plans in terms of integrating and, and having less human interaction and data? Yeah, that's a great question. And this is exactly where Illumina is actually the headliner. So the idea of like putting the the whole effort of putting the genotyping data and making it like a public resource, not only to our platform, but through our platform to other potential uh, companies. That's what we're trying to, to do with them because genotyping array is the key for most of the uh, clinical related studies in drug discovery in particular. Presumably, uh, the success of your model depends on having access to the most cutting edge data, the most cutting edge research. How do you get access to that in a way that other people can't? Yes, yeah, so one of the potential things that, of course, as we grow, we need to uh, like invest more into that. And this is particularly medical records, which I think is the key and really kind of game changer in terms of like uh, being over competitors, let's say. And second part is, of course, uh, the ac full access to patents, which are, of course, uh, like charged quite a lot, so we don't yet have like this much of information about that, but that's where we really want to get into, mm -hmm. especially medical records. Okay. If you're successful, uh, you'll actually decrease the amount of time that it takes uh, some company to get a drug to market. Um, do you have any proof that you're successful to, to date? Yeah. So to validate the model and algorithm, what we did, we basically took the known drug targets from the public resources, mm -hmm. FDA approved ones, and then what we did, we tried to re-identify them with our algorithm, and we got to the 84 accuracy rates. So we've been, been, we've been very good at that because the current rate we can estimate it's about 35 to 40 percent. So we are twice better. Yeah. So, and I think that the more data we adding into that, and more we fine tuning the algorithm, mm -hmm. we're going to get better Go in the up. predicting uh, the drug targets. So 84 percent in comparison to known targets, you know, sort of uh, pre-validated results that you're you're trying to replicate uh, but what about new targets like uh, have, do you have any performance data on that yes that's what we also well of course any new drug target then needs to be validated that's clinically good. in the lab itself so that's what we hope to get from our cooperation with the biotech companies mm -hmm. because for us Don't the main proof facility. would be that it passes through the animal models then goes through the clinical trials and then we are sure that yes we've been able to actually successfully get those and uh, your your product is not uh, does not need clinical certification, right? So you're kind of sidestepping the whole yeah, certification. Yeah. Complementary. Yes, exactly. Much. So mm -hmm. the only thing and what that what what we are getting right now is 
uh, getting the key for compliance because they are cloud-based platform. Mm -hmm. So essentially, especially for when I deal with medical mm -hmm. records. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. For us, key for compliance is the first step, and because our platform is running on the Google Cloud Engine, we are doing it through. We actually signing the BA with them to be HIPAA compliant, and uh, yep. we're almost done with the BA, so it's yeah. really exciting as well. How long is that process? It's really I mean, long. HIPAA is quite long it's process. It's really long. It's usually one year to get, and we are lucky to have the support of Google for the B BA, yep. actually, because without them, we, uh, as we are startup, it would be really hard to get. How long do you ex expect your sales, sales cycles to be once you have the sales machine built out? Uh, you mean uh, sales cycles? Sales cycles to how long will it take Usually from, mm. from contacting a customer? I guess it's quite it long, so it, uh, yeah, at I least like yeah, at least <laughs> like eight months, one year, something like that. Yeah, it's right. not it's not quick. And how's your pipeline looking then? Right now, it's too but too in, in, in the beginning, really. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have the funding to sort of keep going through that long sales cycle? Uh, honestly, we have funding, but right now we start looking for funding because before, I mean, our previous one, we just bootstrapped the whole thing. So, honestly speaking, it's enough for bootstrapping. Yeah. How, <laughs> how, much, how much funding are you raising? Uh, we believe that one million would be a good, good start. Yeah. What's the biggest challenge that you face in the next year in the business? What's going to be the hardest thing? Building I credibility. Yeah, credibility. Because when we're approaching, you know, the big uh, biotech company, and not small, but big one, and we have experience with it, and we go through the all up to the decision point, and then they check, they, they have like a check, sanitary check, and then they say, oh, you don't have a big client behind you. No, sorry. Mm. Go away. So. That's that's the main challenge at the moment for us, and uh, hoping uh, that we will go over it soon. Has anyone tried to buy already while you're still small? <laughs> Honestly speaking, we kind of have a strange model in the beginning. We thought that we can set up the company because we had company before, consulting companies, and we thought that we can uh, close the deals with the big guys yeah. and just uh, Keep go. Keep going by yeah. Yeah. yeah, but now with this specific one, we think it's better to have. And yeah. <laughs> so basically, we didn't look for, but now, I mean, we, we've done some trials to sell, and we realized that that's the way. Yeah, we need leverage of uh, good guys in our team, mentors, and money. Yeah. Okay, Thank give you. it up for Inside <laughs> DNA. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Great yeah. job. Yeah.